Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning to those inside, outside. Good morning to the Kurt. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, bless you today for um, being a part of our 124th celebration of our church. And I say Sunday after Sunday, if you're in your homes, it's no excuse. We serve a God that's everywhere. We ask that you let go and let God. And we pray today that if God, if you let go and let God, that God will have his way in your life and in this place. I'll turn it over to Deacon Hawk for our prayer. Good morning, Mount Olive. It is truly a blessing to be here on this gorgeous day. 124 years, the Lord has kept Mount Olive, and he will continue Amen. to do that. We just have to get in his will and in his way. Have the same mind, and to be on one accord. Let us pray. Eternal God, now, Father, we come before thy presence this morning as humble as we know how. We first want to thank you for this day, and we thank you for the many blessings that you have already bestowed upon us. We thank you, O Master, for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for everyone who is here and those who are on their way. We ask now, Lord, that you would continue to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. Continue to be faithful to us. We ask, O Master, that you would bless the sick and the afflicted among us. Keep us all in your care. We ask, O Master, that you would anoint Pastor Jefferson with the fresh anointing this morning, that he may preach an uncompromising gospel. Then, Lord, we ask that you would unstop our ears and open up our hearts, that we may receive the message and take it out into a dying world. We ask, O oh Master, that you would increase our faith and help our unbelief. Lead us and guide us down the path of righteousness. Let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path, that we may do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Bless the bereaved families this morning, Lord, both near and far. Keep us all in your care. And we'll be ever mindful to give you all the praise, all honor, and all the glory you so rightfully deserve. Yeah. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Thou anointest my head with oil. My soul. 
cup around the cold. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I read to you Psalms 23 entirely. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and more so the doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Once again, good morning, Mount Olive, and everyone out there, and, and happy birthday to Mount Olive. 124 years, God has blessed us. You know, that's all God. We just got to thank Him every day. Every day He gives us another chance to walk this earth. Uh, I remember when I was growing up in Mount Olive. I remember the deacon singing this song. And I remember when I became a young deacon. I remember deacon John Carruth singing this song. I always loved this song. So uh, y'all just follow along. If you ain't heard it before, you can catch on. But I know most have heard it. But just, just be with us, honey. And, and hum along if you don't remember this. You can catch it. Walking in Jerusalem just like God. Walking in Jerusalem just like 
portion of our devotion on this birthday of my house. Amen. Now we turn in the hands of our choir. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning, my Lala, to those who have been here before and those who are here for the very first time. We thank you. For our 120th year in existence. was intentional. My island is here for a purpose, and his purpose will be fulfilled. Let's pray. Our Father, my God, my Father, we come right now. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are in spite of who you are. We thank you, O oh God, for making up the difference in our shortcomings and looking beyond our faults and identifying with our needs. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for being such a gracious and kind God. We would be remiss, oh God, if we would thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing right now, and all that you're going to do. But Father, we know that at this time, that we know that we can't really have church unless we invite the guest of honor in. So Father, we pray right now that you would come into the building and not just be a spectator. Come into the building and not just look and see things, but come into the building and dwell in each and every one of our temples. We pray right now, oh God, that, that, that as you come in and you move in this place, that we will hear from heaven. We pray today right now, oh God, that you come through like a mighty rushing wind. We pray today That we begin to know whose we are and act like it. We pray today, oh God, that we may walk the walk that we talk. We pray today that we will live according to your word. We pray today that we won't just do lip service. We pray right now, oh God, that you bless us with another 124 years. We pray today, oh God, that thy will be done and that we will heed to your understanding and to your will. We pray today that we will be different to tomorrow than when we came in here. We pray today that we won't leave here the same way we came in. We pray today, oh God, that you will have us a part of your divine membership. These are the many blessings we ask in Jesus' name. We pray and thank God. Amen. I'm a little different today. I don't feel like my normal self. We all have those days. We pray to God that he will give us a word that something will be said that will make the difference in our lives. And I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. You, you see what our theme is today. Those who have programs on our anniversary going back to the basics. 
go, go, go going back to the basics, right? I, you know, it, it, you know, for your reference, we can go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, and we will read beginning at, I'm going to start at the 17th verse. 17th verse, and those who will and can stand for the reading of God's word. We just don't. We just don't go with what God says. Sigma, chapter 16. Beginning at verse 7. And it says, it reads, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yes. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus. The Christ. You may be seated. And you and 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 and, 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 I, and, I, and I again I the subject I mean we don't preach from going back to the basics. I, I, I read it and I read it and I read it over and over and over again. Say what? What, what, what? what are the basics? Well, maybe, maybe we must first make it clean. What, what, what is the definition of basics? Right? Basics is often something that is fundamental. Right? Fundamental, right? It ain't difficult. It is easy, fundamental, basics, right? An essential or an essential ingredient, principle, procedure, etc. Right? It's, it's 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 simple, right? Right? It, it, whoa, whoa. Get back to being simple, right? Right? Basically, right? But let's get back to being simple. We have we have gotten so complex in our society and in our church arena that you don't even know where you're coming and going. Ah, we've added to and put so much more on top of what he's already saying and we don't know what's this and what's that. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said my word was good enough. It was sufficient. I don't need no more. I don't need to add any more. I don't need no help us in my word. My word is enough. But no, no, no. I, we, 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 we've gotten away from the basics. The basics, the basics, the basics. I, I said, I, what, 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 what the fundamental, what, what is fundamental? Fundamental serving on a basis supporting this existence or determining essential structure or function. And so what I, I go to say, I said, well, what is essential? Essential, absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back to what's necessary. Right? What, 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 what's necessary? Right? And what are ingredients? Ingredients are a component, a product of an element or something. What? How? How do we get back to standing on that which is totally necessary? 
I read that. He said, Peter, Peter, Peter. He said, uh, uh, Peter, up on this rock, I will build my church. Did we think he talked about the building? Did they be talking about the building? Some of us get messed up. We think that this building here is the church. This building doesn't have any principles. This building is sheep rock water and all that stuff. It has nothing. It is just a place that we come and choose to worship and exercise our beliefs in him. He said, I, over 124 years ago, I believe that someone, whoever it was, sister, whoever, well, I get her name, but she had a vision that came from God to say that we will start this church based on the principles of Jesus Christ. Amen. Says, on this rock. Kind of funny how he said Peter. Peter being little rock. Peter, I'm not talking about it. See, some of us have gotten confused. We start building our churches on little rock, which is like on Peter. But he said, on this rock, and this rock is Jesus Christ. And until we get back to the basis of, of, of putting him as the center of everything that we do, we say, we talk about, we walk about until we get there. It's not his church. It's not his church. It's not his church. Most church doors open today. I, 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 I beg to differ. You, you, I, I can go through each one of y'all. Y'all tell me mine all of yours. Don't get quiet. Just say amen or out. Right? Out? Right? It's not yours. Amen. It's not yours. As long as it's yours, it can't grow. Because it says he will have the increase. He says if you look to save you up, I will draw all men unto you. Right? I, I'll do it. He does the drawing. We find ourselves trying to take on more responsibility for the church than what's ours. Oh, I'm not saying that we don't have things that we should do as far as church people. I'm not saying that we don't have responsibilities within the framework of the church. Some of us so busy churching that we forgot to church. Oh no, we done forgot all about Jesus. We done forgot all about it. Where is it in the midst of this? Every time you hear somebody talk about something, it's about what I want. It's about what I want. Hey, this is what I want. This is what I think. This is what I feel. When was the last time you said, what did you feel? When was the last time that you consulted him about your church? Again, yeah, see, no church. If you believe that it was here, you would ask. Just say out. And the word says that if one speaks the truth, you should say amen. 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 I'm not speaking anything out of order. I'm speaking what the word says. Upon this rock, I will build my church, which is the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And until we go back to the basics, and we make him the center of our church, we will have problems. Point number one, who, we, we, any building or anything that we talk about, if it's going to last and be sturdy, it must have a strong foundation. On crack, the sun, like I said, all other ground is sinking sand.
is not your foundation. You may think that you might be in quicksand. Foundation is not solid. And I'm not saying that we have not as a church ever believed that Christ is the center of our lives and he is the foundation. But you put so much on top of it that we've forgotten it. And that's why I said, if you notice, I didn't say learning the basis. I said going back to it. Because I'm, I'm confident at, at some point he was the center of our church. Let the truth be told now. So many of us in our churches have gone away from that. What is church? What is church? What is, what is church? Is church this physical building? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Some of us take so much stock within this building, believing that this building is our church. What is the church? The church is derived its definition from the baptizing ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right, right, right. We, 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 we are not just a building. We are a group of organisms, people who who, who, who have decided to, to, to place our trust and foundation on one, and that one is Jesus Christ. If, 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 if you're not trusting in him, you have to be trusting in yourself. Have you ever found yourself Wondering why we get ourselves in predicaments. That's because our foundation is shaking. We find ourselves in places. Every time I find myself in a messed up place, it's because I have not done what I needed to do and my foundation is a little weak. So I find myself having to go back to the basis. First Corinthians 12 and 13 says, For as the body, 12 and 12 and 12, for as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of the body being many are, are one body, so also in Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So when I look at that and I say, well, Here's our problem, and I just want to make sure that the way that we can get back to basics is that we have to move from membership to membership. I know, I, I know somebody looked at me and said, membership to membership. I know people say, we've got to move from membership to discipleship. We can't be, we can't do no discipling because we are members of the wrong membership. You say, like, what, 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 what do you mean by that? I'm not talking about we've got to move from being membership to, hey, move from being members of Mount Island. Just thinking in singular moment, this is membership. But the problem is, is that we have excluded the membership of the body of Christ. We just, we, we, we just want to be membership of Mount Island. Right? But our first responsibility, that's why he says, on this rock I will build my church in the gates of hell. But because we have decided, you have to make a choice to become a membership, become a member of the body of Christ. And I tell you that, right? Because if you decide to do that, if you decide to become a member, 
of his membership, right, you won't have no isms. Right, right. Church membership has isms. Because I got an opinion, you got an opinion, you got an opinion, you got an opinion, everybody got an opinion. Then we got our isms. Because, because, and you know what? And you can't operate like that. That's why it says, as a body, if you're born in Christ Jesus, it says, look, the hand don't look at the hand and say, I'm not. You ain't doing nothing. It all has its function. Yeah. And we can't function in totality the way we should because we are not members of one body. Oh, I, 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 I was ouching all over the place when he had me, when he was doing this and I said, what are you talking about? And what is a, what is membership? The definition, the fact of being a member of a group, that's membership. The number or body of members in a group. So I kept going on, I said, well, what does that mean? And then he says, a person, animal, or plant belonging to a particular group. And then I found this definition that said uh, a constituent piece of a complex structure. Hmm. I stopped there. I said, what is that? A constituent being a part of a whole. <laughs> being a part of a whole. Where, where, where some of us have gotten ourselves in, in, in trouble because we refuse to be a part of the whole. We want to be the whole. We want to sway everything our way. We want to say what we got to say. We want to carry the biggest stick. We want to scream and holler. We want to be the one that, that, that sometimes that if, if, if I scream the loudest, if I talk the most, if I say this, if I have the most power, I can control everything. I can control the narrative. I can control the speech. I can control how everything goes. The wind says, I want the wind to blow close the door.
make assumptions. I use you for an example. Brother Rose. How many of y'all know Brother Rose? How many of y'all know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Thank you. Do you know him? You know his name. You see him on Sunday morning. You don't know nothing about him. Do you? No, you don't. I may know a little, know a little bit more because I counsel them, so I know a little bit more. But you don't know him. And I only know what he was willing to reveal. But I don't know him. Now what if I start talking about you? No, you can. Rosen, you come here all the time. Your little suit. Sometimes with your tie smiling. Man, that's my faith. I don't believe it. But I could just start that rumor. If I started that rumor, guess what? If I started that rumor, everybody would get it. And, I, and, and every, before you know it, you would be toast. Because everybody would get it. But if I told everybody how great of a person you were, it would fall on deaf ears. Because bad news travels fast. We fester, we feed on that kind of stuff. Because our center is not based on Christ. I'm kind of tell you, until we get to a place, going back to the basics, is that we start to be more tolerant. We start to be more loving. If we start to look at people through the eyes of Jesus Christ, if we start to act like that, we would see how our church would grow. None of us perfect. All of us got some shortcomings. All of us got some skeletons in our closet. All of us got something that we're not pleased with what we've done. Or some of us, we're just still doing it. You just don't do it on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, let the truth be told. Right? 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 If, if, if we were to look through the eyes and be more Christ-centered church, we would be willing to say I know you're not perfect, but God looks beyond that and so can I. Amen. I know you're not what you want to be or what you ought to be, but I know that God is working through you. Amen. I, 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 I know you still got a ways to go, but I trust God that God, if you keep your head in God's head, God will navigate you through the mess. I know that 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 that, that if 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 I just hold on and wait and you trust in Him, God will make everything all right. I know this. When we get to be a church like that, when folk come in and they're not exactly like you want them to be, if they're not dressed up to the T, maybe they ain't got no money for suits. Maybe they want to have been turned off. And they don't have the means of taking a shower. If we still love them, anyhow, what a wonderful thing God would do in this place. I told you we've got to get back to the basics. Right? Because I told you before that church existed. Church existed even before Christ came. Church has always been in existence. It was that. It was that. Let the truth be told. It was the Holy Romans who came. Okay, y'all know that. Go ahead. You can say, you can go ahead and say, well, it was divine purpose. It was supposed to happen. You are right. But it didn't have to be them. It didn't have to be them. If it was divine purpose, yeah, it could have been. But it didn't have to be folk who claim that they were Christian, uh, that, that they loved God. It didn't have to be them. But it was them. Why was it him? You know why it was. You know, you, you, you know why it was? Because he didn't come like they wanted him to. He didn't look like what he was supposed to. Oh no, they believed that the Messiah was supposed to come. But he wasn't supposed to be hanging out with them low lives. He wasn't supposed to be going and preaching outside. He wasn't supposed to be healing those with affirmatives and, and healing the sick and those folk that we had cast aside. He wasn't supposed to operate like that. Because no, that was not the way that good religious pious people were supposed to act. We've got to be careful. 
when we start and we look at ourselves and we resemble the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You've got to be careful when you start to look like that. I'm not saying that we are, but you've got to be careful when you start to look like that. When legalism and all those things, because, you know, what do they tell our Lord Jesus Christ? In the book it says, thou are not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. He said, look, I hold up. Who are you to tell me that I can't do something on the Sabbath day? I am the Christ. And he said to you, who, which one of you, if one of your sheep or something went astray on the Sabbath day, that you would not go get it? We pick and choose where we want to apply what we apply. Always moving the mark, always changing things. Because I say this one time, if I come to that, I got another thing, I come to that, got another win. Oh, we're going to go back to the basics. Right. I tell you today, as I come to a close, until we begin to understand that this Christ that we serve died for the remission of our sins. He, 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 he paid a price that we could not pay our own. Until we get to the point that we get back to the basics and we start leaning and depending on him more. Until we get back to the basics when we start to say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die, we will still struggle until we get to that point that we understand that he has all power in heaven and earth in his hands until we start to understand that there is no God like our God. There is no one that I can trust like him. He is a sure foundation. He is a solid rock. He is God all incarnate all by himself. He sits on the throne. He sits in intercession on our behalf. When are we going to allow him to do more in our lives? He always showing up for us. When are we going to start showing up for him? Amen. Being a Christian does not mean you're supposed to be a coward. Mm. Being a Christian does not mean being coward. You can't stand for right. What are you worth? I'm sorry. If you can't stand for right, what are you worth? You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you. Right is right. And you say, where's right? Right is here. Right is here. If you're having problems, with what you're trying to articulate or what you're trying to get across or what you're trying to get God to bless you with. If you're trying to get God to be in the midst, if you're trying to get Christ to be in the midst, if it ain't coming out of here, it's garbage. Amen. So I challenge you today to get back to the basics. Lean on Christ, the solid rock, and he will fill this church. Amen. Church, 
but to become a member of the body of Christ. I invite you today. Christ is your personal Savior. And you're just in the process of trying to go back to the baby. Because you've been trying to do it on your own. And you need to unite with the body of the Lord whose foundation is Jesus Christ. I invite you to come today.
sin, we must accept uh, not account for membership or any membership. We praise God for those who came for prayer. I know that people say we have prayer right after. But I'm a firm believer. When we, most times when we get together in corporate prayer, it's exactly that. It's corporate prayer. Sometimes I just need a little more than what corporate prayer offers. I, I, I need some laying on of hands. To, to, to build me up and to make me feel better. I need some individual attention. Yeah. That's it. Right? Yeah, I, I, I need it to be about me for just a second. So for those who are wondering why we take the time to do that, sometimes you just need it. I'm shocked that we don't get more here. Right? Because if the truth be told, all of us can take a Sunday. And come on up, because we're dealing with stuff all week. Amen. But we just don't want people to look at us all funny that we're struggling with stuff, because we want to make sure that it appears that we've got it together. You know, I, 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 not me, I'm not that weak, because weakness is something that I can't show. Right? So we don't come forth. I tell you, I thank Sister Jody, because she come every week. Every week. Because she's dealing with something. Every week that she needs some special attention with. So stop sitting down. You got a problem? We are available. Amen. Inside and outside. And so I tell you, us, 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 that people will start to come and come for prayer if we start to be more like Christ and built on the foundation that what they tell us stays there. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Can't tell you nothing because you can't keep it to yourself. Go ahead. Okay. You need prayer. You need individual prayer. You need individual prayer. Oh, no, no, let's take care. I know I'm not unorthodox today. I know I'm not, I know, I know I'm going to deviate from the plans. And it's hard, right? Because I know we got to go eat. This is our, this is our day. But sometimes we need some individual attention. It's okay to say so. As he's talking, I'm, as they're talking over there, I'm going to, uh, on our Facebook, we have healing prayer for Titus, Dorothy, and Jay. We have prayer for Ben and Joe, Ben for sickness. Prayer for Hilda C. Wright for family condition. I'm going to start at the back and come forward. Let's pray for the Clark family and the Clayton family for the loss of mother, mother-in-law, grandma, sister. Let's pray for the healing of their bodies, the healing of their feelings, everything that comes along with the loss of loved ones. Let's keep them in prayer and let them know that God is still in control and God is the comforter when you can't reach nobody else. God is there. Amen. So we, our prayers go out to you and we continue to pray for you. We pray for young brother Gordon. We see Candace is in here today. Continue to pray for Candace and, and, uh, and Scott because I would, I'm telling you, you know, as a parent, you know, I don't know how I would make it if, if something was wrong or something happened to my kid, right? So we pray for their strength, that they lean on each other and that they know that the church is here and we can, we will pray till the cows come home because I believe that God is in the business of miracle working. 
Amen. So let's continue to pray for them. This is Corbin uh, a, a little bit. I hadn't seen you a couple, a couple Sundays. So we pray that everything's all right with you. Amen. We keep you in prayer. Amen. I, I, I would say something. I already talked about the road since I see them here. He had told me anything. If he had told anything, he'd let me know. Whatever that situation we talked about, if God worked it out, it's good. He's in the midst of it. So let's keep them in prayer because God works miracles. Amen. Amen. Back to back. Let's pray for everyone back there. I would say pray for Sister Luke May, but you continue to pray for her, but she's going to have love us all. Amen. <laughs> she, she, she's good. But well, keep her in prayer. She's going to have love everybody. Amen. But so, you can pray that she can give us some of that what she got. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's continue to pray um, for the Proctor, Sister Proctor. We talk, we pray, we know that God is in the healing business. And whatever it is, his plan is, we pray that he will work it out. Amen. I'm not going to tell him how to do it, but I know that he will do it. Amen. Because when I start trying to instruct on how to do it, I take away from him. I could say, Lord, move her up on the transplant list. Right? Right? But that might not be his will. It might be his will to do some miracle working power. And if he throws up on the transplant list, who gets the glory? Just the transplant people. He wants to show you that he can still heal those that people think are gone. And if my liver is gone, I'm still in that business. But the Bible says that we should be doing even greater works. So if it happened then, it can happen now. Amen. Let's stop limiting God. By putting them in our box. You ever see? In our box. Let's stop doing it. Amen. Amen. I, I see Brother Ted over there. We pray for your daughter all the time. Amen. Good to have you here. Praise God. We good to be here today. Amen. And I'm not going to keep you long, so I'm going to go on about my business. This is Jody had a rough week. We pray for her. Let's continue to keep her in prayer. And, and I'm going to step aside and I'm going to let uh, can I call you can I call you what I call you no, just get, come on bless God today hallelujah thank you it's time to get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. He said, pray without ceasing. That's back to the basics. Yeah. In all things, give thanks. That's back to the basics. Yeah. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's back to the basics. Oh, oh, yeah. Let us go to God in prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Anointing Thank you, God. God, our most heavenly Father. Thou who sits high but should look low, the one we call Jehovah, Jireh our provides. Jehovah to sit to our righteousness. Jehovah Rohi the good shepherd. Thou who is from everlasting past to everlasting future, we come at this time as a corporate body in corporate prayer. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But God would come and we want to call upon the name that is above every name. The name that is able to save. The name that is able to cleanse. The name that is able to heal. The name that is able to deliver. The name that is able to set free. The name that is able to bind together. Hallelujah. The name that is able to keep us. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you said if we shall pray in that name, that there shall be nothing that is too hard for God. So we seek you this morning. 
for ailments and for sickness and for healing, oh God, for deliverance, for confusion in the mind, oh God, for finances, oh God. We come, oh God, for restored relationships, oh God. We come for strength, God, to take another step on another day. God, we come in your name, oh God, over addictions. Hallelujah. We come in your name, oh God, over loneliness. Oh God, we come in your name for strength today. God, we come in your name for continued joy, that joy unspeakable and full of glory that yet remains. Father, we even pray for that, God, that it may continue. God, we pray, hallelujah, that you would move in the midst of us. When we're here present together and when we're separated by miles and far apart, that God, we would still be of one mind Recognizing the one Lord, the one faith, and the one baptism that is in Christ Jesus. And we say this morning, thank you, as we celebrate 124 years, hallelujah, of existence of this fellowship. Knowing, oh God, that the body extends beyond us, hallelujah, and that during those years, oh God, folks have gone out. They've reached out. They've built out, oh God. They've come from this place and gone to other places to extend your church. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that's part of the service that continues after this, oh God. We want to rejoice in fellowship and give you praise now and evermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And lay down the burdens you have carried for innocent you Thank you, and we welcome you with open arms. We invite you to sit and fellowship with us. Open arms for you to return and be a part. Amen. Amen. Bless you, as I say, Sunday after Sunday, when we have visitors, and we're glad that you chose to come and worship with us today. There are no mistakes. Things are not by habitat. Things are by design. So we hope that something is said and done that will lead you back this way again. That, that, that you have gotten something that you can take in the days, weeks, and months, and years that will help you stay strong and grounded for the foundation. You said your name was Rashad. 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 All right. Close enough for me. I remember that. Amen. And if you have not recognized it or smelt that or anything else yet, uh, immediately out of the church, we will be eating. Amen. Amen. 
So that was another reason I was trying to get out of here because I can't preach. Preach tomorrow on the empty stomach and I smell good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm going to uh, bless the food before we dismiss. And, uh, and, uh, and then we'll admit dismiss and we'll go, we'll go to the back. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you that this food, that we ask that you would bless this food, that it may be used for the nourishment of our body. We bless those who prepared it, who took the time to prepare the food. Father, we bless all the people who will be serving. We thank you, O oh God, for those who have a willing work ethic, O oh God, for you to serve and to serve your people. These are the blessings of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless. Lord, I praise you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face for you and give. Thank you.